Koko taku tuakana ko te kanapu Kua rite ki te Ki te tuku i ngā kōruru ki te āta wānanga Ki te ruku ki tēnei kaupapa O te tātai waihere Te blockchain um, so welcome uh, et te whanau, uh, to our next installment, number six of our uh, Blockchain Navigators Kaupapa. Um, we're really, yeah, really stoked to be having this, have, having this kōruro. Um, mm. Nore te tuatahi me mihi ki a koe te tuakana, uh, nau mai ki tō tāu a whare kōruro. Um, ki tēnei kaupapa e kai ngākau tia nei e, e tāu, uh, kua, mm. kua āta kōruro i roto i ngā rā, i ngā wiki, i ngā marama, kua, kua hipa. Um, me taku hika ka nui ki te, ki te noho tahi ki a koe ki te ruku ki tēnei kaupapa. Nā, yeah. hey, um, tēnā, kōrero mai, kō, kia, kia mōheo mai e tahi o te iwi nei, um, tēnei tangata he kanohi ki te, uh, kai ngā tōpito o te motu e kawea nei ngā kaupapa Māori, so a lot of you will know uh, te kanapu, the flash, uh, Donny, <laughs> and any other alter egos that you guys might know, um, and He's got a background in tikanga Māori, um, te reo Māori, and is working across different organisations to to uplift and and oh, ke au nei te, te pupuri e nei kaupapa. Um, but bro, oh. tēnā, tēnā kōrero mai mō, mō tō au, uh, mō tō, tō whakatipuranga, ka tahi ka ruku ki tēnei kaupapa. Kia ora, tēnā rā wātu koe i wera uh, kōrero mihi nui mai, uh, ka nui te, te whakaiti o te nākau, te rono wake, uh, te tūhono tahi ki a koe i tēnei kaupapa e hoa. Uh, me taku mihi nui uh, ki tēnei kaupapa tonu, uh, ki a koe ki tēnei puna whakaaro e whakakikihia nei e tātou hei, hei kai tonu mā te iwi, hei, hei kai mā te pīnati, hei, hei whakawhānui a ke tau o tātou whakaaro. Uh, kei te mihi hoki ki mō kai kōrero i mua mai iāhau e hoa. Um, I just want to also acknowledge all the, the speakers who have contributed to this space. Um, in, in the past as well, and um, hopefully I can add some value today. I roto ia tāua a kōrero e tuku nei tātou ki te iwi. Uh, ko ai ahau, <laughs> kia ora i wa, ko ai ahau, ko te kanapu a nasta tōku i ngoa, uh, me pēnei pēa te kōrero a nei ahau, kai taurana moana, kai koe nei taku kaina noho i tēnei wā, uh, pēnā kai te pepehea ahau o waku whakapapa, mai nā kuri a whārei ki tihirau, mai ma ke tū ki tōna riro, uh, nā iwi katoa i roto, uh, koe nā ahau, Enari, ko te pākai tana o taku Māori tana ko i ato ni ko taku tūhoi tana. Ne, uh, mm. Taku u kai pō te kāena whakapakeke mai a hau e mōhio nei a hau he Māori. A ko rua atoki, uh, nō reira, uh, ko te pātua tahi mai o tō tātou ao Māori mai kia hau, um, ko taku tūhoi tana i ako na mai kia hau i roto rua atoki. Ok, so I'm from rua atoki, from tūhoi e karema, um, but in saying that, um, I was born and raised in Australia. <laughs> Uh, I was born and raised in Australia. My father is um, is Greek Macedonian, um, and my first language was actually um, Macedonian because my grandmother brought me up in our house in, in Australia, our home. Kāre uh, tōna reo pākeha, she didn't have an uh, English language, so um, the tradition is that kariro mā nā kuia, te whakawhakake mai nā mokupuna, it's the kuia that, that brings up the mokupuna while the parents go out and work. Um, long story short, um, Mum brought us back to um, to, to New Zealand um, and to bring us back up here. So that's another story also. Kutaku Mama, Kofiri Mako Black. They had a day need the name drop. Um, but just to give you an, an, an idea of my background and, and I suppose that's the environment cool. that I've been brought up in. Um, so if, if we don't, those, are those, those of us who do not know who Fidi Mako Black is, I suppose she could be considered one of the pioneers um, in the Māori recording scene uh, back in the time of uh, when a pere ha marui a ma, uh, hine wehi mohi ma, when they all pretty much put their neck on the line um, and went into the mainstream scene and stuck staunch to our kaupapa champions for our real to revitalize and uplift our people and our language. Yeah, um, and that's and my mum succeeded. She did quite well um, all the way. You know, she took our language and our real to you know basically to the international stage. Um, so, you know, I was brought up in that background also from. Greek Macedonian culture in Australia, um, speaking Macedonian, coming back into Ruatoki, uh, being exposed to the depths of Tūhoi Tikana. Uh, and saying that I didn't speak te reo, I would chase up my reo journey as a young adult. Um, but, you know, watching my mum come through her music career, watching the way she um, 
I suppose, expressed, used her Taona Māori to express herself and to give her a unique expression in the world and how she uh, portrayed and put that out into the world for, with the messages and the reasons that she did do that. Um, mm. So I grew up seeing all that. And I turned around at about mm, 17, 18 and said, hey, I'm going to tell you about the Koro Paka, I'm going to tell you about the Koro Paka. Kia ora, tēnā koe bū. I'm going to learn my language, I feel a bit, you know. Yeah. So, I was in the whole Maki Māi, for two years, just hearty, living in Auckland. And, e Koro Māori te kai, ao te pō, pō te ao. Once I built up enough confidence, I went um, and did a little bit more study in the universities. Uh, I think I was about 20 years old, now I work in next minute. Uh, big lights of Australia. Ten years gone, lost. Ben Ozzy. Kau kia tu ano. Kau kia tu ano kia hitreiria. Hoa ko hoa kia tu ano kia hitreiria. I love that they get me wrong. Uh, learned a lot about myself and my adult life in Australia, and especially got to apply a lot of the work ethic that I learned from my uncles in Rātoki. Mm. And you know, saw that I had a bit of a killer work ethic, which you know opened a lot of doors for me in Australia. Yeah, tika. Um, but within that time, you know, I started getting moke moke, and then my mum came over and sang once the show in Sydney. Um, and it brought me to tears. <laughs> mm. well, it, brought, it brought me to tears, bro. And, and I just felt this deep union connection to go back home and to reconnect with my two hoitanda. And that's what we call, I figured, you know, when I come back and told the story to my uncle, he goes, oh, he mate mate ao ne te ra, boy. That's, um, yeah, he tino mate, kup, kupu i roto i a kote ui. Tino kupu te ra. Ko te mate mate ao ne, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's expressed tangibly, but it's a spiritual umbilical cord to your whenua and to your people. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how far you go, ma te hoki ana ke ki tō iwi, ma te hoki ana ke ki tō whenua, ma te hoki ana ke ki wumarai, ma te hoki ana ke ki tō reo, e hono mm. wai tērā, e mākona ai te nākau Māori, e mākona ai tō wairua. So you generally, nothing can appease it other than just going back. Atu i te hoki atu ki tō kāinga, eh? Atu i te hoki atu ki te kāinga. Ko i nā te rono wā, uh, mo tēnei wairua, i noho manene nei, that they, they felt alienated and isolated i Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, and that brings a, a good point here of, of why the digital space is so important because we can make those connections now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I, I suppose what is my passion and my, my you know, I come back into my young adulthood, um, I, I was dead set on finding me a beautiful tuhoi woman. <laughs> And I did. Um, I, I, I met my wife, Jordan Te Arani, and, um, you know, he called it on Māori. I was like, ooh, ooh, I like this. <laughs> and, um, I would say, no, ana, mea ra wāke, ko puta mai he hua. And we had a whānau, and he called it on Māori, anna ke māu, wa ki a māu, wa tamariki. We speak only Māori to our children. Um, and, you know, we had this deep-rooted passion and desire to bring them up in a world where being Māori was normal and the language was normal for them. Um, yeah, so for, I, had a, I had a, probably, you know, this much language then, and I thought, well, I, I need to really make sure that I can translate every single context come the time that I get asked any question. So mm. I pursued, I, I changed my career from construction, went into um, into the whare wānau mm. to learn to be a teacher um, and to, to teach te reo Māori because I thought it was a way I could learn the language and have a career at the other end. Mm. And I pursued it obsessively, <laughs> like like obsessively, like, you know, mad scientists uh, at night up studying and doing things like that. And then from there, I um, yeah, my, my real journey progressed and eventually I, I got accepted into the Panekere Tana o Te Reo, uh, our Pope of Panekere Tana o Te Reo. Um, what is the panikita? What's the translation, brother? Um, the the Academy of Maori Language Excellence. Excellency. Eh? Or, yeah. as I like to put it, um, the SAS for the Maori language. The yeah. SAS of the Maori. Hard work. The SAS, hard work. Yeah, the hard work. Eh? Well, it was. Oh, it was the SAS, you know, basically for for learning Te Reo Maori and to develop Te Reo Maori. Um, uh, revitalizes, I suppose, soldiers for the army to go out and lead the kaupapa to revitalize our language and our culture. Mm. Um, look, that's what I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about our people and uplifting our people. There's no two ways. And kare koa tu kare mai. That's what I'm passionate about. And I'm passionate about doing it through empowering our people, through revitalizing our language and our traditional knowledge systems within them. Um, and then also, I'm also passionate about reapplying that to a modern day context so yep. that we can thrive in a modern world in a Māori way, because I think we as Māori 
we have so much to offer and there's so much value and substance and depth to who we are and our fuck up and our traditional knowledge systems. There's so much grounding in it. Yeah. Um, and I know this because it's, this is what it's done for me. And I don't want to be here by myself. I want to be here with all my people. <laughs> I want yeah. us to all feel this and to, to come up to, you know. Um, and it doesn't matter where we are in our journey. That's, you know, I know there's a, there's a lot of mummy about the different levels and what we have lost. Um, but the important thing is that we do go together. Mm. You know, that, that's really, that's something that's really close to my heart. So what do I do? I develop Kaupapa Māori. I work for different organisations to implement Kaupapa Māori, uh, to implement Kaupapa, really to uplift our people. I've been a teacher. I saw that the teaching, there's a lot of hoops you've got to jump through. Uh, it's a bureaucratic, bureaucratic system eh, at the end of the day, and it was really hard uh, um, yeah. in, in the sense of um, it's outcome-driven and things like that. It doesn't really look to restore what was actually taken from us, I suppose. Eh? Well, if the system took it from us, how can they give it back? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, uh, maybe that's enough for now, but... No, no, boy. Yeah, no, tēnā koe. Ana, tēnā hoki koe mou i whakai kia kia hau mai ki roto i tēnei tēnei o atau e wānanga. Ana, me kororo i nai nei mō tō ruku ki tēnei ao tātai waihere. So, um, oh. one, of the, one of the things that me and the bro have been doing with, with a few of our other mates um, has been starting to look into the real around blockchain, around blockchain, NFT, cryptocurrency, and um, tēnā kororo mai mō te nei kupu te tātai waihere, tahi ka kororo mō tō ruku. So, just tell us about this word that we've come up with for blockchain. We're throwing it out there. Kapai. E, e, e o tāu a hoa. Um, tēnā, mena he whakaro anō wā koutou. Tuku a mai, hono, a nei mō tēnei wā. E whakaro mā tātou. Awesome, awesome. Kapai, kapai. Uh, ko tētahi o wā, wā māua ko Rāwhiti Rua Ken, <laughs> we have a bit of fun back around, uh, he whaka Māori ake i nga kupu uh, crypto, eh? so we, we sit there and translate and muck around translating the, um, the crypto kupu. And uh, the kupu that we've come up here with for blockchain um, blockchain technology is um, tātai waihere. So if you think about the word tātai, we hear it most commonly in tātai whakapapa. And Tatai talks about um, layers and interconnected layers. Okay, Tatai. Tatai, Whakapapa, Tatai, Heke. We've heard it like that. Uh, waihere. So, Waihere is a computer code. Takuatsu um, a Google, you call it all my data, te na koe. Um, so, it's Wai, W A E Y Here. So, you can hear the word Here and there, Here the tie. So, the Waihere is a computer code. Tatai Waihere. Because blockchain, as we know, it's encrypted block codes sitting in blocks or units, and they're connected in a series of chains, and it would call blockchain technology. So, tātai waihere. Yeah, koe nā tērā e hoa ma. And, and pēhea tō ruku ki tēnei ao te tātai waihere, like, i hea okay. koe timatai, hea te mea i tō i a koe, like, how did you get into blockchain? What was your first introduction? Was it through NFTs? Was it through cryptocurrency? Was it through something else altogether? Like, what was your introduction and in, in like kind of like what pulled you into it? Paita pātai, tēnā koe te pātai nā, e hoa. Me pū, me more, me wheel, me aka, me reo pēra tēnei whakaaro. I jumped onto Gary V, I don't know, about a year ago on Instagram. Tōhunga, eh? I love tōhuna ake nei, tōhuna ake nei, tōhuna ake nei. Ah, hua mata ki te tōhuna. He's yep. got a he's got he's he's got a way of predicting and he can he can read market patterns and things like that. And I thought that was fascinating. The way that this this person can actually read and, and predict the market. But one thing I learned from him, Ehua Ma, is this thing about market response. And you know, every every invention or every innovation that was ever mass adopted, um, mm. basically you develop a product or an invention or a service. Um, as a market response. So what that means is you see the gap, you listen to what the people, the movement, what's needed, so to speak, and you develop the product and you and, and the market will tell you whether it's, it's needed or not and they adopt it. And I saw, I was just watching, I was, I was like, wow, that's such an interesting, interesting, interesting I was like, okay, so how do we do that as Māori to uplift our people? Hey, look, look what's the messages? What's, how can we do things to uplift our people and market response and how can we put messages out there um, teach our people ma on the at mass levels like that. If you think about it as market response, I said, you know, I'm always thinking about ma on a Māori now people. So that was first and foremost. Um, and then I started, you know, NFT started blowing up. Oh, wow, that was fascinating. I love technologies. I love the opportunity to to basically advance myself and to advance ourselves. So I'm always looking at these technologies and seeing how I can apply 
how I can use them to to further, I suppose, um, benefit the co that I'm passionate about, okay? So I thought NFTs, and I thought that was just fascinating. I just looked into it, digital assets, the idea of a digital asset. And I, I love assets. I was like, ooh, property, yep, okay, I love property, cool. Yep. Mm, digital. So I, I thought of it straight away. Okay, maybe it's a digital property. It's like a digital property title, Kapai Tera. And then Rafi Tiro, I haven't told you this ever, well, but I saw your photograph the first time I ever messaged you. I said, oh, my God. There's my bro, he's a panekiritana and he's put an NFT into the space. I, I already know it's a Kopapa Māori NFT because I know yeah. I know your walk and where you've come to be to where you are and I know I followed your mahi. And the first thing I did was, was text you, hey bro, bro, how yeah, do I yeah. get that? No I idea. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was probably going to metamask this and I was like, meta what? What? <laughs> 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 I didn't even have to mask. No, yeah, yeah. meta mask. Can I just give you, you know, a couple hundred bucks and just send it to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's a big journey from that point to here. But what I, I've got a, I've got a brilliant friend, um, um, Clayton Lowe, and he works in the digital space. Yeah. And I, I knew that he can, anything that you can think of, he can make it happen digitally. Um, he can yeah. just, he can cut it up and make it happen. I had really no idea, but I, I rang him up and I said, brother, NFTs is like, oh, yep, I know about NFTs. He goes, you know, he's got all this big crypto portfolio and whatnot and having an awesome core and all. And I'm like, oh, I really want to buy this NFT. And he, he basically gave me a one-hour crash course on things. And all that, I just kept bringing them back. And it took me it took me about, I think, two or three months till I finally purchased it. That's how long it took me to figure out the game, my bro. <laughs> yeah. And it is. It's a deep dive, eh? Like, it's a, it's a steep learning curve. Um, for for all of us in this space, and I guess that's that's why um, you know I wanted to have these one, and that's why we set up the the blockchain navigators, the um, Te Mona New York Crypto Discord. Um, you know, as a space for us to ask these questions, because all of us are stepping into this, you know, new, space. and we are early in the overall scheme of things. Um, and I just wanted us, you know, as as Maori as as Iwi or Te Mona New York, you to be able to just dive in. Have some tuakana teina um, mm. action going on, you know. Ke aku tato mai a tato, a ma tato ano tato e manaki. Um, mm. Yeah, bro. So it was cool having so, those connections with you, and then when you jumped into the Discord and you, me, Kawiti, um, Hinerapa, there was a few of us eh, starting to throw our, our, our kororo, our real Maori around the space. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, hundred percent. And what happened in that education period? I mean, I, I learned a lot. Yeah. And now I, I I see the mass value and the benefit. Okay, I like to look at any technology. Let's look at crypto technologies. Let's look at blockchain like this. Yeah. It's technology, Karema. What is technology? If we think about Hawaii, we learned how to harness um, a, a stone and make an ads. And from that ads, eh, we were able to carve a waka and then we were able to sail out and um, go into new world. So that's what technology to me is. Eh? It's an ability to... Um, to innovate things. Um, now, we talk about, if we talk about blockchain technology, as far as I'm concerned, the way I look at it, this is the, the latest, biggest, greatest innovation, I, I think, in, in, in history for, for a lot of reasons. But um, what is blockchain? Blockchain is, is a network. So back in the day, uh, what was the, the greatest network that we had as, as Maori people in the Pacifica was the ocean, okay? But once we had the technology, uh, which is create the, to to carve the ads and to create the waka, we were able to harness the energy of that network, which was wind, water, and get around to places, find new worlds, find new life and opportunity. Now we've got crypto, blockchain, cryptocurrency. It's a network that can connect the world. We can send communication, transactional communication, however you like to look at it. Uh, I can send it from here to America, even though the stock market's closed at night time, I can send the communication speed of light can attach a million bucks to the communication, safe as locked in. Now you tell me what's quicker, jumping in the waka and sailing all the way there or sending it on the blockchain uh, network. So it's just a network. That, yeah. to me, is fascinating. So how can we harness, like if, if we think about the digital space, the digital space is consolidating communities of people at the fastest rate ever in the evolution of human history. Yeah. How can we, as Māori, harness that um, and utilize, how can we harness it and then fuse it with Mataud on the Māori um, that we can develop a protocol and a network that we that optimizes, I suppose, you know, we optimize, you know, I suppose, how would you say it? 
fuse it with our, our Māori virtues of manakitana, things like that, that optimises Māori, um, how I said them? Oh, Māori success. And Māori. Yeah, te rohanga Māori, yeah, it's, it's how we are as Māori and we're a networked people anyway. You know, kanohi ki te kanohi, um, ngā, ngā mahi whakawhanaunga, koene to tātou kai, koene to tātou wao. Like this is how we work and, and you know, if I want to get something done, I think of the first three or four people that I'm like, oh yeah, they've got it, they've got it. Okay, let's go, let's let's put that together. So it's, um, you know, we're a connected people anyway. So this is just people. another evolution of of how we already work. Um, and, and something I've been enjoying, you know, having yarns with you and some of our other um, whānau is, is like, okay, sweet. So if that space is existent and our tamariki, our rangatahi, they're going to they're gonna end up in there anyway, how can we make sure that our values, our, our tirohanga, our, our uara, um, our worldview is in that space? So it's a one, so it's a number one. So it's a safe space for, for our, our um, taitamariki to go into. But also, too, you mm. know, that value that we bring. We are a really connected people, you know, and that's a massive value. Like, if I want to do anything, I, I know I can reach out to someone who knows something about this, you know, and, and blockchain and, and NFTs was exactly that, you know. Exactly that. My, my first, you know, connections, okay, I'm learning about, what's an nft talking to the honey tuna he's just about to drop his graph grams jumped in and uh, my first discord experience i was like what the hell is this you know but you know watching and learning from the bro that's mean and then i talked to our other two to richie richie mills and you know like he he you know gave me a whole lot of um things to think about and you know how to look at the space so he gave me a few you know kind of things to one on and i was like sweet bro I need to learn a bit more, you know, because NFTs are built on blockchain and, you know, cryptocurrency. I need to go and do some study on that, um, mm. you know, in order to come back to you with, you know, I want to make some moves. I want to do something. Sure. Um, so some more wānanga with Richie. And then i got another mm. bro, um, Zane, over in, he, he's actually um, Absoliga, um, the Crow Tribe, Crow Nation over in, over in the States in Montana. Okay, and, hold on. Um, I met him while I was over there anyway, find out that he's on um, he's on this buzz. And then I learned heaps from him, you know, another tuakana, ao Māori, tirohanga Māori, or to, tira Māori, tōna iwi. Um, so like learning from from those fellas and then coming back, other bros like our bro Anonymous, you know, I learned heaps from him as well about how our cultural lens, mm. how, how we can look at the space. And again, uh, you know, I've said it before, I said again, a mic drop moment for me was when he told me, bro, as a as a um, indigenous um, artist and as an early adopter in mm. this space, I feel like we have a responsibility to set a, a cultural foundation there. We have a responsibility to set a tirohanga, a tikanga mm. in this space yep. because, like he said, you know, our, our taitamariki are coming in here, bro. So that's something that. He, you know, me, 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 Timata Tawa Te Ataruku, eh? Like, tika, you want to kick us off in that space? Bro, you're pulling heartstrings now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tuatahi Ake, I want to acknowledge your friend, um, our friend Richie. Uh, I haven't met Richie yet, but pretty keen to meet him. Um, but he, I learned a lot through watching and following him. Uh, so yeah. I just want to back you up on that. That was awesome. Um, Richie likes Richie. JPEGs. Richie likes JPEGs on YouTube. Go and check yeah, it he, out. He's, he's, he's on the Tepano. Heaps yeah. to learn. A wealth of knowledge in the space, how to navigate it too. Um, two two points I want to touch on that you that, that are pulling my heartstrings here that you that you sort of spoke about. One is our tamariki. Okay, um, how do we um, basically create a space that our tamariki, could, whether we like it or not, this is the world that they're emerging into. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, if we don't get in now and create a space for our tamariki to be Maori here in this space. They're going to come in anyway, and that means that it doesn't mean that Maori is the be all end all. But let's just say that, well, to me it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, <don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think it's a it's a it's a big part of um, the well being of a Maori person is is, mm. is being able to be a Maori in any space. Okay, um, now how do we create a space where our tamariki can come in and be Maori? If we don't create a Maori space, then they compete. Their Maori world is competing with this other attractive world. So first and foremost, that's it as well, number one. Number two, what I've seen in this big renaissance revitalization movement, okay, that's 
you know, we can fuck up our back to not talk about war movement, the revitalization of the language, uh, the Treaty of Waitangi Tribunal and all these post-settlement treaty trusts and things like that. The Treaty yeah. of Waitangi is, you know, the political largest through the Treaty of Waitangi now is, is epic. You know, you can almost say it's a, you can almost say it's an economy, it's a business, okay, if you want to look at it that way. And through that now, because there's money to be made in being Maori, because treaty partnerships really, if you would, things right in line up to policy, um, it's a it's another route of funding a karema. And, you know, this is, you know, it, so what you see in the space is if the kaupapa, I mean, at the end of the day, the person who's signing the, the checks, if he doesn't know, if he doesn't know any better, um, you know, you could just chuck a couple of Maori words, a bit of Maori flavour to it, whatever, bang, there goes that money that should really be allocated um, for to restore what has been, you know, sort of taken, yeah. so to speak, rather um, than just some some painted on, so just, you know, which which was yeah. you know, there's so many different um, um, examples. But let's just get back to the point. Um, uh, Maori talent is getting exploited for the, yeah. for the reasons of making money. That's the political largesse or the leverage, eh? political money. The yeah. other part is the open market. So the best example is uh, the Haka and All Blacks. Wow, what a brand! What a brand on the international scale. And you can't tell me that that doesn't draw economy to New Zealand, to Māori tourism, to all things Māori because of what the haka represents, um, you know, power, strength, uh, tribal roots, all this sort of stuff, the way the world yeah. looks at it. And you see a lot of people also leveraging that in the market space, okay? Yeah. Well, so you have rugby union for one. <laughs> that's it. You have an exploitation of Tāona Māori. And I've, a big kaupapa that's, that's really close to me is actually – how do we protect our Tāona Māori in these spaces? Yeah, right. So awesome that you touched on that. It's a very important question. Um, and it's, you know, at the end of the day, every different domain has a different dynamic in how you deal with it. Yeah. That's got to, you know, we've, we've got jurisdictions, borders, international, things like that. There's a lot of ways to look at it. But first and foremost, I think what the what, what the most important question is, what's a Tāona Māori? How do they map the Tāona Māori? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, if we think about, let's say we see, let's just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just give you some examples, try and make it quite simple. Yeah, mere paunam, okay, a, a mere paunam, oh, we all think a greenstone mere, oh, a lot of, it's a big taona. Yeah. Okay, but I think the taona S value that we place on it this day and age is purely probably, I think, based on the traditional knowledge, the whakapapa. Mm. And what it means, it's almost like nostalgic in a sense. I'm not saying it's that that's what meaning in it, eh? It's, 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 it's what does a meriponamu mean? That's right. We wouldn't um, use it for utility as much these days. I'm not going out to have a battle every day. Engari ko ngā, yeah. yeah, ko te mana oro to o te ponamu tuatahi o, o te taonga tuarua. It's the imbued yeah. value of one, the resource that it's made from, um, and and also the the meaning that we attach to it, eh, Hundred percent, brother. And bro, we can strip that back, and that's got layers and layers and layers. Ponamu, the fucker papa of ponamu. Where does that come from? What's the you know? What's the process in harvesting it? Where does it come from? Who are the people? What's the kawa? What's the tikana? Uh, yeah. The mere. What does it represent? Tu matauena. What's the process? What's the kawa? What's the tikana? Do we put a modi into it, which is a vitality that brings it alive and connected to a spiritual source? You can strip it back for days and days. We can go yeah. into it. Uh, but back in the day, it also, like you said, it had a practical use. Okay. Yeah. So it was a technology. Uh, you could use it to cut things, chop things. You know, we've got chainsaws, knives, and all sorts. You know, so what's a taona Māori? It's, it's really important to understand um, what a taona Māori is. And sometimes uh, taona Māoris were just technologies back in the day. I'm not saying that's a metaponym. Metaponym has got status and it's got a lot of significance. But yeah. although everything does have a whakapapa, um, they also are, they'll just... Taonga, they were tapu tapu, they were, it was just technology as a, it was a, it was a means of life. Yeah. Okay. And then we look at it this day and age and we think Taonga Māori, somebody takes a photo, chucks it on the internet, sells it as an NFT. Oh, you're ripping off our Taonga. Yeah. Okay. Mm, you know, well, so there's a, <laughs> it's dynamic, ne, Huama. But mm. I suppose the difference between something that's just physical and something that's a Taonga, um, we, we, now we're going to look at this word mātauranga Māori. What's mātauranga Māori? Māori knowledge. Māori knowledge. Um, mātauranga, I suppose the best way to look at it, it's a, um, it has a whakapapa, just like we said with the pōnamu. We can trace that back to the origin of pōnamu. If we look at, you know, the origin of the earth, um, rangi and papa, and the, the creation story in our pūrāko, 
and everything is interconnected and it has a it has a whakapapa. And the matauranga that we get is from our deep intrinsic understanding and our belief and our way of looking at the world and the way we are, you know we understand our creation and, and our whakapapa to the world and how we apply that. Mm. And when you apply that to anything, it pretty much becomes a tonga Maori if you if you're doing it for the reason of it holding if you if it's holding math so if I created this pen and I put mātauranga Māori into it and then imbued that mātauranga Māori into it, it becomes a taonga. Mm. And I am now the kaitiaki of this mātauranga process in this taonga. Mm. If I was there now to hand it over to somebody, I wouldn't just give it to any Tom, Dick and Harry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to use a judge of, char- judge of character. And when you, when you transmit knowledge or mātauranga, you're transmitting the taonga with the understanding that they will, um, you know, basically... Be a custodian over that yeah, katiakina. yeah, yeah, katiakina. Katiakina. Kapai, so that's you know, in a, in a nutshell, yeah. Taonga Māori, and it has a philosophical baseline where it has a knowledge of whakapapa, a knowledge system, and, and, and values and things imbued into it. Um, yeah, kuira tera. And, and I want to, I want to reach back to um, one of the bros, um, over again, um, one of the First Nations bros, he's got a follow Louis Gong, um. Eighth generation, go and check them out. Um, but he's he's got a kōrero a fakatoki, which is um, get uh, you know buy from inspired natives, not native inspired. So Ma- you right. know inspired Maori, not Maori inspired. So you'll see heaps of like different brands and stuff like that. Even when I was in Brazil, I saw a, I saw a pub called Haka with this thing that was pretending to try and look like a tamuk or didn't look anything like it. And I'm like, what the hell have you got, you know? But they're inspired by Māori and so they wanted to use that. That's not a taonga Māori. There's no mātauranga Māori inside of it and there's no Māori attached to it. So um, I think one of the things, again, as early adopters, we need to kind of really put um, quality toy Māori out in this NFT space, in this blockchain space, um, mm. It's made by people who actually have that matauranga, that whakaro, that intention into it. You know, kia riro, hey, tenei, hey, hey, taonga Māori. Otherwise, mm. it is just something, you know, I've, I've seen on OpenSea, man. Some people have just copied, paste um, photos from Google of our pofakairo, of our taonga, and they're selling them as NFTs on on open sea and i'm just like man to hear kato tera or yeah, we've had well. our our mates like um anikaro wurumu berry ball in them their designs being stolen mm. by, a, by an overseas company printed onto duvets and cushions and yeah. stuff hoodies and stuff and then sold you know like total actual theft intellectually uh intellectual property theft mm. um and appropriation of of our tonga Māori. So I think, you know, there's a really big space for us going into um, NFTs. And I love what our, our bro, Mr. G's doing. You know, he's putting out his art as art. He's not doing it as, as a <clears throat> flipping kaupapa, as a rug pull or anything. He's an artist and he's putting out art and we're putting it into the space. Same as me, I'm, I'm a photographer. I'm an artist and I'm wanting to put my whakahua into the space, but also... You know, tini, tini matauranga Māori e kōrero nei tāua. I'm not just selling the image, it's the story behind the image. It's what goes with the image. So when I'm doing a kapunga, a pito or something like that, I'm talking about the growth and development and learning, you know, all of that that kind of goes with it. And I think that's that's a point of that's difference right. that we will have moving into the space, we and our, and our mates moving into the space. And I think that's a really big thing that we kind of need to, it's kind of like that mark of authenticity, eh? It's there you it's, go, bro. it's yeah. um, having a bit of that, you know, that street cred or you know that that matauranga cred that, you know, if I see something in there, I want to just like um any NFT project. If you're looking at the team, are they doxed? You know, if they are doxed, you know, like do do they have a backing in this in this aisle, or have they just copied and pasted that from from somewhere else? Um, and yeah, like like Kirama's just talking about toyiho, um which is like a mark of authenticity that, that exists in Māori art um, already. So it's like, how do we do this in this um, in this blockchain space, but to protect our, our taonga as well, so they're not getting exploited, eh? Kapai, um, 100%. 100%. <laughs> Whakai katoa ki wo kōrero. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you can't, it's, it's, it's an open free market. 
um, you know, sometimes you've got borders and rules, but sometimes, you know, when we're talking digital space, it's it's open international and there's no rules, jurisdictions, eh? Um, you can't stop somebody, imposters, eh? You just can't. It, it is what it is and it's always going to happen. Um, you know, it's um, but what we can do is it's really important that we put if authentic Kaupapa Māori Tauna out there and educate people um, what Kaupapa Māori Tauna is and what why is it a Tauna and what's the Mātauta and the process that goes into it. Um, you know, th- the way I look at a Tauna Māori is it's not just you fashioning something, but that's your whole line of up and all the knowledge transmitted down, handed down. And although that might have that might have stopped in your line, you've still gone and learnt it and picked it up right down right to that expression of toy that you put into yeah. you know that you put into the world and so you know we do have a responsibility to to put authentic taonga maori and educate people and that stands that stands as a kaitiaki so anything yeah. else that doesn't quite meet that standard people can the, the free market people will choose yeah. what, what's good and what's not they can make their own decision i'll give you an analogy of the way i, uh, way I look at it yeah but you get somebody who I, can't, I hope I don't. Yeah, look, you get somebody who who's just learning te reo Maori, maybe, and they're just doing it for trying, you know, trying to trying to be, you know, that on that cedar and things like that. And they're they're really eager to just get up and and call it all. And they're getting up and they're they're speaking in in, in a in an open forum where they're supposed to be tikana, which which we know fly called it has a a certain process that you've got to follow. Right? It's, it is it's such a there's such a protocol to fly called it all. Uh, but they'll get up and they just want to, you know. Uh, have a turn or they don't really know what they're doing and they're fumbling around and just saying all sorts of random things and whatnot and then you get the person who knows who's got the fuck up up and the back you know he's, he's done his he's done his yards he understands the process of fight order and speaks next to him well the crowd will will work it out real quick what's what yeah. um so in regards to nft if we put out an nft and you got these imposter nft cop- trying to be cope up a maori uh, we have we have an obligation and an opportunity, really, to educate the world again on who we are and the depth of our taonga. And, you know, taonga, I, I think the greater the greater mātauranga taonga that you put into the taonga, then obviously you can. I'll give an, I'll give an analogy. Uh, G, if I could use your analogy, um, well, let's look at Mr. G and what he's doing with NFT. As we all might know, G recently carved a tokotoko for his papa. Uh, now that tokotoko, right from Toroa, right down to his papa, the whakapapa's in there. And yeah. it has the karoro on top, and the karoro um, is the, the native big seagull um, here in Aotearoa. And the, 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 the whakatauā ki tepeha on Tōtiti Island is um, he karoro inu taiahau. Um, which means, you know, I am a resourceful person of the ocean. I'm connected to the ocean, just like yeah. the karoro. The karoro head was on top. Now, you can see this has a rich, deep mātauranga taonga aspect, whakapapa to it. He's, he's expressed it in a tokotoko and he's handed it to his papa um, in honour to pay homage to his papa for his years of service in the pai pai to, yeah. to reflect back to his papa, this, 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 is, what, this is what your mahi means. Now, a taonga like that, you wouldn't just chuck into the open market. But what you're doing is you're transferring knowledge and taonga to another kaitiaki. You're giving it to somebody and they become the kaitiaki of that mātauranga that you have created. Mm. Now, if we look, if we scale it back to some of um, our brother's NFTs that he's creating, um, there is aspects, some of them deeper, some of them um, not as maori, not as, um, how would you say, obviously full-on taonga Māori, but there's still his story, there's still his creation. He still yeah. puts everything into it that he's about and it's his expression. So it's a different type of mātauranga, and a different type of taonga that can go on the open market. And if somebody just grabs it and flips it, well, that's their prerogative, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's taonga that he, that he feels that that he trusts people with the kaupapa, but that it can be uh, protected, but you can't always, you can't screen people as they come into open sea to see what's what. What's what. So... Um, there is two, you know, a, it's important to put Taonga Māori authentic out there, but also um, the extent of, you know, the type of Taonga we put out, the process that how we do give the Taonga and mm-hmm. make sure that if we, it is a big, important Taonga to make sure that the education process goes with it. Mm-hmm. And maybe if it's not an open market, maybe it needs to go to the right person or to the right. So there, these are things that I'm not saying this is how we're going to do it, but these are things to think about when we're doing this sort of um 
you know, when we're trading our tongue on the open markets, so to speak, yeah. there's nothing wrong with trading our tongue on. You know, there's nothing wrong with it because basically what it is, it's, it's, it's a transaction of, of knowledge and value. And we've got a lot to offer this world and our art speaks volumes, you know, mm. um, and in a world where it seems to be disconnected in Western frameworks, it's very sterile sometimes. Our tongue connects, gives us a connection back to to something that has substance, meaning, grounding, papatua in the group. Um, you know, it's, it's got that holistic sort of connection. Um, yeah. So, yeah, um, that's, yeah, cut by, uh, that, mean, that, that's how uh, I... Get down there. <laughs> as, as we're talking about the G, here he is, um, and he's asking yeah. a question, how to kupu Māori more intellectual property? Otherwise, that's something that we can come back to um, to revisit. Uh, well, you know, if we look at we look at the, the what does mana whenua mean? Um, mana whenua this day is translated in the government sense as the iwi. <laughs> mana whenua means you've got mana over that piece of whenua. Yeah. Um, you've lived on there for how many years? Uh, you know, your people, you've, you've got history recorded or everything into it. Yeah. So mana definitely has to be in there somewhere with intellectual property. It's a type of mana over mm. that mā tauranga. Um, yeah. Maybe mana mā tauranga. Mm. At a short guess, you have yeah. the mana over that matauranga, and although you impart that matauranga to somebody else, you still have the mana that you have still created that tonga. Yeah, you've still created that. That is still you. And when you impart it over to that person, they just so when I bought your NFT, brother, I said I'm very happy to be the kaitiaki of this tonga. Yeah, it's still yours, yeah. but I'm no, just the kaitiaki. Yeah. So he mana he mana matauranga pia. Yeah, yeah, for karo pai, te pai ana te rakia. And um, me to our bro Richie Mills, he's in here in the footy. Hey, <laughs> um, yeah, and and that's one thing that actually really shows up in blockchain, eh? Te, te whakapapa o te mea. So if you've got an NFT, I've created it, and I kairoto ko ko taku mana ma tauranga. It's forever, like does doesn't matter how many times that that fakahu gets passed on to its next kaitiaki, it still has that link back to. Te rāwhitiro, bosh rāwhitiro, photography, nāna te rāi hanga. Um, and you can actually see, and that's one of the kind of the big selling points or the big important things about NFTs, eh? you can see that provenance, that that whakapapa of that item. So you can go, you know, in 20 years' time, I've got that Mr. G Aotearoa sign. Big ups to you, bro. Awesome. <laughs> mihi ana, mihi ana. I'm so grateful. Um, but 20 years' time, 30 years' time, People will be able to look and see that oh, I'm, a, I'm I've I've hodled I've kua kua mauroa yau tene tong and that's another kapu for us at the fano mauroa hashtag mauroa that's how I'm hodled hold on for dear life um, either in NFTs or in crypto mauroa so let's start using that at the fano but anyway like in 20 years time they'll be able to see that I bought it straight from Mr G and I've still got it in my collection and I fakatu ana te rai te mauroa um, you know, or, or tene taonga. So yeah, um, like it's it's those sorts of things that you can actually see that fuck up. I can see that oh, the kanapu bought this first, and then actually he's passed it on to Titahi or or Tamariki. You know, like, and I can see it in 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 one of his kids' wallet. You know, further, and then like these these taonga can go further and further. So yeah, no, nah, it's it's real exciting, eh? But at the same time, we do need to think about how do we keep the integrity, um. Of, of our matauranga Māori in the space, Kia of our toi Māori, of our okay. mana tauranga, um in the space. And I think that's, you know, that that's one of the key things, like you said, bro, that, that example of the person that gets up, you know, mao mahi ka kitea. You can see a kai kororo that is yeah. practiced, that is learned, that has taken time to think about what they're going to say that are actually speaking for the people rather than just speaking for themselves. Kia and then when you get someone up there who's just reciting... Ten to para para in a row, trying to look cool, trying to sound cool, <laughs> but um, you know, doesn't doesn't have the mandate of their iwi, or they're just up there talking about themselves. You can really mm. see the difference, and that's kind of on the open market. You will see the difference, but uh, that's that's only if the the audience, you know, the 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 fano that are sitting on the marae atea, that's only if they know the difference. So our jobs as as Maori creatives, as early adopters. Um, is to educate the the, the global population. Anenga toi Māori motuake nei. Um, and and actually, when we see things like what happened to Wiramu and um, and Anikaro and them with their art getting ripped off, we need to call it and we need to educate That's people. Right. Like, don't buy this stuff. 
some of That's our right. own people were buying this stuff. You know, right. we're buying stolen IP, mana matauranga from uh, another company overseas that have ripped off one of our own. You know, and so we really need to educate our people eh, on that. Um, hundred, a hundred percent agree. So that that's part of the part of the part of the thing is that, you know the the philosophy of putting cope up and educating people out there is that our people become the educated people become the watchdogs and calling it. And you see that has a great effect. We have a look at the Hamu and Nikora online call. People are scared of them. Oh, they shut down their whole accounts. <laughs> you can we call them out. <laughs> Just having a laugh. Yeah. But we are looking to, It has power. It has power because you're in a public domain and nobody wants to be found out in the public domain. So Which education is like is... on the Marayate, you know, potentially. Yep. Hey. It's like the queer setting you down. <laughs> yeah. We've got to be the queer and sit them down. And one mark. Now, this is what I love about crypto. This is what I love about blockchain. As we know, Ethereum, there's our blockchain. You can build layers on top. You can yep. code it. The way I've been listening to some, um, uh, was it Michael, Michael Saylor? Oh, amazing. What a Michael Saylor mm. podcast online, and uh, is that the what is money? Those what is what is money? What is money? Check it out on YouTube at the fun. It well, I tell you what, it expands, it will expand your mind into what's possible. Um, in this space, the thing about if we look at let's say, um, Bitcoin for instance, it's been developed with a protocol, and the protocol you can't trust people, but you can trust computers if you code it right. So if we look at a kawa on the marae, um, you know, it's like a protocol. So Bitcoin has a kawa, but it's been actually coded in. So if we can code in the kawa or the protocol, that basically sets the terms and it keeps people on us. It sets the terms of engagement and how, how we engage and how it's, trans, you know, the transactions within the network. Um, you know, we're talking about looking after our pile now. I don't see why we, if we can imagine it, that we can't set up a platform, we can't set up NFTs and we can't, code into it a protocol that actually um you know encompasses our our values and our traditions or the way we um we sort of um protect our tonga that we can we can put a kaitiakitana aspect into code a kaitiakitana aspect into it um you know there might be have to be some type of i don't know pohiri process coding for the person coming in so mm-hmm. at the end of the day kanohi kite a seen face on the marae is an accountable face here yeah? but in the digital world um you know, we can hide and be anonymous. Um, you, Let's dive into that a bit, bro. Like oh, um, one of the things that, that we did, you know, in our um, Te Mono New York Crypto, just chuck that mm. out there again. We'll, we'll chuck the link in the in the comments here, Huama. Um, but no mai te wananga into our Discord space. Um, one of the things, and we were talking with the blockchain Māori and, and Kawati and a, and a few others talking about pōhiri. So, you know, in in... Um, and NFTs and stuff, we hear about doxing. So when you see a project, you want to see if is the team doxed. And dox just means are they revealed? Can you see who they are? Are they real real people? Um, are they, you know, which has a level of accountability. So one of the things that that we were talking about in our in our little wananga was <clears throat> if um, if we say we've got a digital marae, say in the metaverse, we set up a digital marae. In the metaverse, hey, Fariwananga Matato, as a place of learning, as a place that we can come together. Maybe we have a process of a pohiri. So, out on the Marae out in the main Discord, out in the main area of the metaverse, you can be anonymous. You can be an ape or you can be a, just, just putting it out there, I want to be a Maui. Um, when I'm in the metaverse, I don't want to be anything else. Um, but anyway, you can be anyone and you can be anonymous out there. But say to get into this. Um, this trusted learning space, a place where we can trust each other, we can be accountable to each other, um, where we can learn from each other and things like that. Um, maybe you have to be doxxed. Maybe you have to reveal who you are. And for us, that would be the pohiri process. That's right. You send out your wero to see, oh, yeah, do they, are they coming with their intentions? And that's like that. You know, are you agreeing to the ground rules of this Discord? You know, once you've come come in to get into the next zone, and it could be like how people get into a whitelist. Um, it's if you know to get into the next zone, maybe you do have to dox yourself. Maybe you do have to show who you are, uh, nor here, um, what your intentions are, those sorts of things, and that's your poor heady process um, to get into the kind of the inner circle, the trusted circle, where we can really. 
um, be open and you know trust each other. If a no way, motera momo, tera momo horo paki bo. Um, tai te tino ori te taku fukaro ki tena. Um, um, we as you what you're talking about, we see the value in having a mala in the metaverse. Um, let's just, if you don't mind, I'd like to, to put what, what you're talking about in a bigger perspective, yeah, and then we can cool. scale it back down and go into it. Um, I'm, I love my Māori world. I'm a mātou, a Māori man. I look around, there's not much of it. It's hard to, you know, I'm, I'm isolated and I have to, you know, like it's like a tangihana's on me. I'm going to the tangi so I can go be Māori. You know, we're looking for kaupapa. We're, we're tangihana hopping and things. It's not always the case, but, you know, I'm saying... Yeah. When you're into, when you're developing and you're learning who you are as a Māori, you start getting quite zealous for a kaupapa, and all you want to do is just immerse yourself in that world. The yeah. problem is, it's really hard. Um, you know, I've got family, I've got kids, I've got responsibilities, I've got work. I can't always go and immerse myself in a one in a setting. Um, and the best one in as we know, is that is a is a hui on a marae. Yeah. Uh, a te hui. tanihana. Uh, our tanihana, as we know, go into the depths of of, of, of our kawatikana protocols and our knowledge systems and things like that. It's a beautiful wānana. Um, so I thought, if I'm sitting here, I'm isolated, I have to always go find kopa, but I can't develop. How many other people are like me out there? Yeah, you know, yeah, now yeah. we've got the digital space where we can create. It's consolidating communities really fast. We look at um, Trillionaire Thugs, 200,000 people. Well. What yeah. a big community. Yeah. Okay. Mm. What about all our people who are who, who, who want to develop and you know develop their Maori tanga and they can't always get to a space, but what if we can Especially develop with a COVID, space? bro? Especially, Especially with, with like lockdowns or you know, you yeah. you got you know limits or that's right passes and all that sort of bullshit. Like, you know, how can we still connect um when we when we are physically disconnected? And that's something we really saw with um, with Zoom, eh? Zoom took off over that first um, that first lockdown, and we started using Zoom as a way of connecting. But what happens if we could go a little bit further than Zoom? You know, a little exactly. bit deeper, a little bit different kind of communication. Exactly. Eh? And I know I, I hear I hear I hear people saying there's the risk of replacing one for the other. I don't think that's the case. No. You, can never, you can't replace. You, you can't replace organic connection. You just yeah. can't replace organic connection. I mean, we, we know this to be real. A digital hug is not like a real hug. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> <don't know> digital <laughs> huggers. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, um, you know, technology still has the ability to connect vast networks of people right across the world, speed of light, and we can still come together and we can still get cultural, I believe spiritual, intellectual, yeah. uh, financial sustenance we can develop a community and we can everything that we that we that we thrive of as Maori people we can do it in the digital space and it's i'm not saying again replace one for the other but no. why, and it's you know, so important to make sure that we do have like like we just had a comment it's so important that we do have that connection with our real world you know absolutely. like it is so important that we make sure we have that connection with our taiao but as well as that, it's a, it's an end. It's not a this or that. And we need to make sure of that, eh, bro? If I can build on that comment, now let's say it's that's that's good for us who know what that connection is. Yeah. We know the papa. We know our umbilical cord to Papa Tuanuku. What about, let's say, our people who don't quite have that connection, you know, mm. they, they've, they've, they've lost their connection, but they find that connection within this world. And then when they go out into the world, they're like, wow, I know how to navigate and connect now. I know, I feel it. That's yeah. the power of it. So that, that's why I'm saying, when we're in Hawaii, for instance, you know, all we did was, you know, we, tr we transferred all our world to another world. All we're mm -hmm. doing is creating a new old battle in the digital space. And it just, it's, you can never replace digital for organic, but they can work side and side to help and support each other. So yeah. you can do things faster, harder, smarter, stronger. You know, at the end of the day. Mm. Um, so, getting back to it, yes, we can. I think yes, we can have a mara in the metaverse. Yes, we can code in a proxy. At the moment, it's Zoom, and with Zoom, we're like, okay, and then now, today, don't do it. It's all people um, sort of controlled, so to speak. But you can code things up. Yeah, imagine you can code <clears throat> do an induction process that's coded that as the person comes through it, they actually get to learn what tikana and kawa is just through. Yeah. They're yeah, just Actually navigating, getting into that space. All of a sudden, they've been educated. It's automated because you've coded mm. it all up. 
what a beautiful process that is. And the process is coming from an anonymous position coming to, through to docs looks like getting up and doing your pepeha on the marae in a Maori mm. sense. Yeah, okay, yeah. so when the ope comes on, we don't know who they are, but it's when they get up and they do their fly corner, then we have a whakafadaunatana. You know, that can be coded. So the pro, you know, the, and if people don't know that, how do we put a system or something in place that can support that and build that so they have the tools to navigate and come into the space? And yeah. all of us, you know, we can connect our people like this. People who live in Aussie and want, you know, like, wow, I want to be, you know, I want to, I want to know what it is to be a Maori and a, you know, my fuck up and I want to connect to it, but I don't know what that is. Yeah. And so it's a daunting, it's a daunting for to come back to New Zealand, you know. And we know as Maori here, we can be quite intimidating because we, 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 we guard our culture jealously. Yeah. So yeah. Like, in an Aussie, all those years, they've got a flash gear, they <laughs> But yeah. you know, like, we can. We, we can connect people and we can reconnect our people and we can have to develop these spaces in the digital world where we don't even have to, it's not people ran. We can code it up and it connects our people. Then when they go back into the world, they can start applying their matauranga that they've learned. Yeah, yeah. In, in the real world, eh? In the world. You know, there's a, why not? Yeah. We, we, can't, we can't look and come to Aotearoa and, and did it here. Let's do it in, in the digital world. Yeah, and that and that is how, you know, Hawaii Ho. You know, like this this is the next kind of frontier um for us. And and like I said, whether we like it or not, um our Taitamariki are gonna be in this space. Like the space is gonna be present, so we may as well learn how to use it and set tikanga and safety around it. Um and I there's think those that's a, Yeah, yeah. Hard up, bro. Sorry. No, nah, no, nah, tika. Yeah. And, you know, um, we've just got a question from Tia. Have we considered or at Wananga about how Māori land records can be secured in the blockchain? Ara te tahi whakaro. Hey, hell whakaro, bro. So, um, love it. I've, I've, been, I've been thinking, how do we, how do we connect, a, um, how, how do we connect our, our Māori land? You know, there's a, there's a political navigation to happen there. But how do we, how do we use our Māori land as, as, as leverage and value? In a cryptocurrency on blockchain, that's right, and connected into a network, mm-hmm. and the currency of exchange for the you know for all all, all transactional and value and wealth uh, within that network of Maori land uh, all comes through a currency. So all of a sudden, if you redistributed that back into the people, ah, uh, yep, hundred percent. That's uh, I mean, yeah. you can go bigger than that. You can absolutely go bigger than that. You can connect everything that's Maori, <laughs> and we yeah. can go. We can. Yeah. We can. Yeah. And as a store of and as a store of matauranga, um, you know, I've I've got another mate who, you know, her her kaupapa, and you know, maybe we'll have a chat chat with her in, in a little while, K Marie done. Um, but her and her crew have got a got a kaupapa looking at how do we store our matauranga, our whakapapa and stuff in the blockchain. Um, so it's you know, kakore and ngaro. So if you know if one computer goes down, it's not all lost and stuff, but also how do you protect those permissions around it? So who can access um, their whakapapa? You know, mena hea uri au no mea, kata au te hono ki te whakapapa ki a mea, you know, um, that, that sort of thing. So that's a really interesting space that um, is a really emerging space. It's a, it's a new space. So that's that. Um, how does tikanga Māori, how does te ao Māori show up in this um, blockchain space? And I think that's... Yeah. You know, our our quarter or it's more questions, eh? That we're throwing out to people. I just That's want right. people to start thinking about this because it's here, and I don't want our people to be the last the last people to get on the bus. The bus is gonna go, <laughs> so we can either be on it first, you know, and get the good seats, or at the back, you know, or you know, we're we're last and we're getting whatever's left. Um, Kia and also, yeah, yeah. How can we? Um, yeah, because we've got so much value to add. Our so tikanga, much value to add. Our tikanga, can help people keep safe. You know that the the pohiri, the the tikanga of a pohiri is a doxing process. Yeah, hundred you know? percent. And well, and that way, once you've doxed the team, once you've had the pohiri, once you you're in this place, then you can go. Oh yeah, now we can work together because we can actually trust each other. 100%. It's not. It's not. I'm. Oh, like who are you? Or you know, mm. is this your alter ego? And all of that's mm. all of that other stuff as well. Um, you know, talk about accountability. So for our, our bros, Riapo and them, Kings and Stan and them, with the um, Eager Beavers NFT, we know it's them. We know mm. it's their names on the line. If they were to pull a rug pull on us, 
you know, everyone would know about it and they wouldn't be able to walk onto any marae or, you know, any of their concerts. Everyone would be like, boo, that sort of stuff because they're cannibal. It's it's who they are. So we know. I know I can trust that kaupapa, mm-hmm. honey, and I'm in. And, you know, and I'm and I'm fully in with that kaupapa. Eager to yeah. check them out. But it's that sort of thing. Hey, like, if, if you know the people, then you can trust them, then you can go in a little bit. Um, yeah, and so that's, that's a really important aspect, I reckon, of this. Yep, yep, tino tika. You know, I just want to re- reiterate one point, uh, a couple of points, actually. One one thing I'd like to say again, you know, if you can think about it, you can code it and you can create it, <laughs> you know, anything in regards to your pātai um, teia. Um, um, even when we're talking about um, accountability and doxing ourselves and things like that, if you create the network, if you can think about the protocol, you can pretty much code it and and that's you know the way people interact within that space. I'm, I'm wondering if you can code that, you know, you can code mm. you can code a kawa, you can code tikana. Um and yes, that might you know, in saying I'm not saying do that, I'm just saying that things anything's possible, possible. as long as you can think about yeah. it, it's possible. So storing Maori land with information, like because blockchain is solid and secure. Imagine it's on the blockchain, both, all the file comes out, all the cortical comes out, and you could put so many different aspects to it. If you think about it, you can do it 100%. Now, one thing I want to also touch on is don't be too scared, you know, to think tapu tapu e diwi, all tapu tapu, you know, like, I'll, go, I'll, go, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, funny story, but then I'll bring it as a perspective. I got my, my uncle, uh, Ranui Black, Uncle Arthur, he was an awesome speaker on the Bara and grew up in the staunch Maori world. And we used to go, oh, uncle, come out of the urupa. <laughs> and he said, hey, you know, wash your hands and wash the lawnmower when you go, ah, tap in my ass. He tap in my ass. But um, one thing that Pau Temara taught us, as you know, brother, in the, um, uh, the Panekire Tanga o te reo, karekau te tahi tapu e kore taia e te Māori ki te whawha. There's no tapu in the world that Māori cannot handle. The thing is with tapu, uh, I suppose the way I like to look at tapu is tapu has an element or conduit to the spiritual world. And that's what makes it tapu. So we've got to, what we do with tapu is we manaki tapu. Um, mm-hmm. So we're looking about our taonga and, and, and tikanan kawai and all these things. There's no reason that we can implement things that are tapu into the spiritual, um, into the digital world. It's the way that we manaki the tapu that mm-hmm. maintains the integrity of that tapu. And tapu, as we know, it has a lot of value because it makes us behave in a certain way. Yeah. You know, it, you know it, it, it actually develops these virtues in us and the virtue is a moral standing to make you, you know, so all of a yeah, sudden, I'll, I'll, tapu, eh? yeah. you know, you have a tapu, and I know that you have a tapu, and your tapu comes from your ancestors right back to the source. So therefore, when I interact with you, I'm um, I'm making sure that I'm, I'm manaking the tapu that you have, and we're interacting like that. Mm. Um, I'm going to go one step again. Yes, I don't want to sterilize those understandings, but imagine if you can also code it to make sure that it's, um, you know, you can code that to make sure that those things are protected. Imagine we can develop a platform where we're creating Taonga Māori NFTs and that we can code the tapu in those mātauranga that it, the way it's interacted with and the way it's taken and it has to go through a process to even buy it rather than open market. Mm. Imagine we can redetermine our value and how the world interacts with that value as Māori people. Imagine we get what the Treaty of Waitangi set out to do. Imagine if we can protect Rock the score yeah. in the digital world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we've got a lot to offer Maori people in the open market. A lot of value. And how do we come together as one powerful network, Maori tourism, Maori trading enterprise? Think about yeah. it. We connect us into one network, and then we develop a protocol, and we're teaching the world in the process and the yeah. way they come. We don't want to make it hard and lock them out. I'm saying, you know, there's there's a lot of no, no. Yeah. Cult, but these are good things to think about, and it's possible. Everyone's looking for substance and value and. And mm. connection, and we can do that. Hey, and I think, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and and I think well, because that's that's something, and and you do. I I do hear people saying, "Oh, tapu tapu this or, or whatever." But I don't actually, I don't actually believe in that. He tapu and metiakina me manakitia ngā tapu. You know, we need to. I think because we have so many people that aren't adhering to the tapu or looking after the tapu, that's why so many things are going wrong and out of whack. If we really think about how we're looking after the tapu, the sacredness of those things, I think it'll put us in a much better place. So I think that that it's that principle way. It's that principle when when looking at the space, how we code things, how we how we work things, how we interact with each other, how we interact with, with our taonga. 
Um, mm. I think if we're carrying that thinking into this space, I think we'll be well looked after. Kia ora. And and that's all something that's also something that we bring that is deeper, that is a value add. If you if you're talking op- open market, you know what's the difference between um, honey and honey with Matauranga Māori or with Fakaro Māori about it? Um, that's that's got a story about where this comes from. That's got a whakapapa, That's got all of that. Which one sells for fifty bucks a kilo versus ten bucks a kilo? You know, that's right. The, the one with the story, the one with the depth, and I think as 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 Tewi Maori, we can bring that real depth. And I think you know, I I don't want us to become a shallow shallow people, bro. I don't want us to be in the space and then just suddenly be all about the flash, flash, and the you know Kilo lose man. our lose our depth and our substance. So Kilo. how how we need to part though? Now how do we do that? How do we keep that substance and that depth? Awesome, 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 awesome sort of part that you're really bringing up. Now, <laughs> I think, you know, as a sales, if you look at a salesperson, I've seen, you know, on some of these posts that there's two great things or there's two things that make a great salesperson. One is selling to the need. Yep. So that's you, you're talking innovation Problem, technology to yeah. make things easy, you know. Yep. Um, we're, we're, we're only a small population. Yeah, we could do it. Let's, but there's also selling to a person's emotion. Yeah. And that's what we're good at. At, at Māori people, man, we're deep feelers and our stuff comes from deep places. And we know people, you know, they, they can't even explain it sometimes. They're like, ooh, my hair stand up when you do the haka. <laughs> you know, I, I think that's how we, as, as Māori people, we have a lot to offer. But the intention is everything. Knowing your mātauranga, knowing how to protect it, what the intention is. And if you do something with the the... the in your heart because you want to offer true value but you also want to educate people and you're not just trying to make a buck that's the difference eh? with our taonga maori i believe if the intention is right you can actually offer anything into the open market if the intention's right and it's done properly um see if it's open market make a buck well that's that's different but if it's it comes at a price but the actual exchange of the value is and, and if if you give that taonga to Let's say it goes into the other person's hand, and that tongue and that knowledge that you're given them is transformative for them and improves their life and their outlook and the way they the way they interact with the world. Yeah. I think that's where we could be powerful as Maori people. Now, if I can scale that back, we look at um, well, not scale it back, but what are some of the virtues? They, eh? um, I think, the greatest Maori virtue is manakitana, and you can see manakitana work in full flight in the marae ecosystem. How a marae operates, everybody works together for the benefit of the kaupapa, which is the well-being of the people. So yeah. the two papaku, for the the two papakus laying there, um, you, you know, the, the person's passed away at the end of the day. But yeah. our job is everything is about manakitana, making sure everybody is looked after, everyone coming through. Manakitana is the pinnacle that everyone's trying to achieve, and it works as one big living organism. It could be a couple of thousand people working in unison, you know what I mean? So, you know, we have that to offer. We know how to, as Māori people, we know how to assemble in masses and mobilise, and um, and we can carry these, you know, we've got a lot. You look at Matatini. Hmm. How many thousand people? 15,000 people, pretty much. We have a lot to offer at the iwi in the world. I don't know many other people who can assemble um, on common values and common virtues uh, at and that mahi size. Mahi. Yeah. Mahi te mahi. And we're, we're assembling, you know, so again, Matatini, what's it, 15, 20,000? Let's just say 15, 20,000 people. Um, these aren't people that are coming to a festival for their different agendas and whatnot. These are people who are coming for a cultural gathering to express yeah. themselves who they are. And they've got a very common, you know, I mean, the, the, the substance and the whakapapa of that is huge, you know, and we, we've, we've really got that to offer the world. And yeah. that's Taonga Māori in a sense, and, and that's the power of connecting us as a network. And when people come and interact with us, well, they can have a beautiful experience while they're doing it because we do monarchy people. We know the monarchy people. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, I jumped around a bit there. there we no, no, no. Some, some gems there, I think. <laughs> I think, hey, 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 fa fa ma tau. Um, you know, te taha wairua. Kia ora. Kia wairua. Te korero taua mo te tapu. Um, mo te yeah. tapu, mo te noa. Engari, tēnei, tēnei ao wairua. Ara te ao wairua. Um, te ao kiko, kiko. Hea pea te honunga. Like, when we're thinking about the spiritual world or spiritual spirituality, um, mm. the, the way that we connect with our taiao, 
how can like does it have a place does it, sure. does it have a place in here sure um i think the short answer is yes i uh uh the kaupapa te wai rua tana ki rotu i tēnei ao. A ka pēhea taku mōhi o tēnā. Uh, ko o tiake i wetahi ki te, ki te tuku poroporo waki maru nei te Zoom. Yeah. Um, so we've seen one of the most spiritual processes that we run through in, you know, is in our poroporo waki process on the mara we have the two pātaku, um, is to get up and when you... How the, the poro, okay, let's poro poro aki. Um, poro poro, cutting, and aki, aki, aki is urging them to move on. So you're urging the wairua to leave the physical and to pass over into the spiritual realm. Poro poro aki. Now, if we, um, I know some of our most renowned tohuna who do poro poro aki because they can't make it, or mm. you know, for COVID and things like that, and they've actually had to do their poro poro aki um, yeah. through digital means. Now, what that tells me is it's intention. Yeah, and belief. Now, I think spiritual spirituality, or I think spirituality, is, it's an internal experience. To tell you the truth, yeah, it's an internal experience, and nobody can tell you how to be spiritual. That's your relationship with your source. Yeah, you know. Cool. Otherwise, we start talking about religious practice and dictating and whatnot. Your spirituality, yeah. your, <laughs> it's your connection to your source. Um, as Maori people, we have whakapapa Maori, so we have a whakapapa to our spirituality and how we express that and how mm. we connect to our world. But it's an internal experience. So I absolutely 100% think I can sit here on the Rorohiku and have a deep spiritual experience on the Rorohiku if I'm having an interaction, a spiritual interaction with somebody that causes me and my wairua to have an experience within me and connect yeah. to the source, connect to my tayo, 100%. Mm. Um, to answer the question in short. Now, here's some interesting... Uh, um, Uncle Pau Tebara... Um, he's probably considered the leading expert in the country on tikana. If they we put If you don't, yeah, if you don't know who he is, you could look him up on YouTube. Um, and he taught us in the Parikiratana. He taught us kite taha o te tikana, um, and really the depths, stripping back the layers, the depths of, um, I suppose, even spirituality within our Matauranga or within our own Maori. Mm. Now. I, he was talking on a podcast, starting a podcast with Prao Negloin, all in Te Reo Māori, and he's talking about artificial intelligence. And he's talking about, we know, we know in, in Te Reo Māori there's either 10 heavens or 12 heavens, you know, Te Kau Marua Ngā Rani, and he goes, hea hakei tua tui tēnā, what's beyond that? Mm. He goes, hea hakei kore nei, i homai hea taku roro e te atua hei whakaaro. Te atua gave me my brain so I can think. Because what's beyond that? He's talking about why can't we create artificial intelligence and go to create the 13th, 14th, 15th. Mm. When I go there, I will take my atua with me. And what that tells me is when he's taking his atua with him, that he's taking his tikana, he's taking his... You know, he's taking his kawa and his tikana. His, his worldview, his, 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 his way world of view. seeing the world, his way of interacting with the world. That's right. With whatever so he, dimension it is, eh? He come up with the concept of artificial intelligence. The tohuna is where I got my knowledge from 20 generations back. Why can't we code it into them with all the information that we have, coded into a digital artificial intelligence um, organism, so to speak, where I can interact with him and ask him the questions of, hey, I'm doing your karakia, but uh, where does it come from? What's the quarter? And have an uh, interaction with this <laughs> digital organism that's being coded up with all the information to make these decisions. It's like, why not? Like, yeah. you know, he's he, and he's really pushing the boundaries. And what I, you know, at the iwi, if we always just stick to what we know, that's all we're ever going to know. Um, we didn't get to We wouldn't Aotearoa, have come to Aotearoa. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. wouldn't have come to Aotearoa. You know, I like to think back to Socrates and his greatest saying is Takutipuna Socrates. Eh? <laughs> his uh, his, uh, his uh, greatest Tawaki was the greatest thing I know is that I know nothing at all. <laughs> Don't limit yourself by only what you know, but push beyond what you know to see what else can be realized. Now, a beautiful thing that, you know, when the way or a reason I think like this, I believe, is, um, well, um, you know, especially with Matauranga Māori. Um, Uncle Poe did challenge us to think like this, but what he would do was he would take us to a certain area in the corridor, right down to Atsuatanga, there, for instance. 
deep, deep corridor about how Atsu was a, um, invoked and how we, you know, right into the depths of it. If we're talking Atsu at Tangara. And yeah. then he goes, when he gets to the he goes, Nore era mawe ki mai kia hau, na tātou te atsua i hana, na te atsua rānei tātou i hana. Did yeah. we create atsua? Did we create us? Yeah. And he left it right there and he left us to conclude. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about that is, is that when you conclude yourself, you, it's taken me three, four years to come to my conclusion, but you tell you go on a massive journey to figure out the answer. And I, yeah. I, and I found the answer for myself. Mm. Um, I'm not here to give secrets. That's, I mean, that's a spiritual experience for everybody. You yeah. know what I mean? And you know, it's not for me to tell you, um, but it is for you to think about and find your answers at Karima. Mm. Um, digital and it's also realms. Like, yeah, for me, it's for how do we, you know, ka whakaro ki, ki o tau atua. You know, ka whakaro ki a tāne, ki a tangaroa, tāwhiri, a ngā, ngā, ngā tini atua. There are all ways that we can explain a phenomenon that we're, that we're seeing or we can connect and personify a phenomenon or an, an aspect of our environment. So Tangaroa te moana, um, we can we can give him or her hini moana. We can give them personalities. We can right. we can see what are some qualities that the ocean has um, that I might see in myself. Oh yeah, you know, kia, kia maui au in the ahua o Tangaroa, or I can invoke those aspects. Tamanui te ra, I look at Tamanui te ra, strong, radiant. Okay, you know, I want to invoke those as, aspects inside of me, but it's also it's a way for us to explain our environment or to describe our environment. Um, mm. And that's something that I'm interested in in this um, digital space. Awesome. And you know, what I work you know, is there an atua of the metaverse? Yeah. Hey, at the our... end of the day, I think what I think I, digital, I, yeah, I think digital world is pure energy, yeah. it is harnessed energy. That's and harnessed into devices. Bro. It's, it's information, information and energy. Yeah. Where does all in, what's what's the source of all energy? We can fuck up, up it right back to the sun. Yeah. Radiant energy that we're harnessing and creating. So we've got so the sun gives the world gravity. Um, gravity pulls water, and then we've got hydro energy. But it's all because mm -hmm. you know it's the sun that actually gives us that gravity, gra uh, the gravitational force on the earth. Everything could be all our source of energy is to the sun. So we've got gravity. We've got um, electricity for burning coal, as we know, as photosynthesis in the plants goes yeah. in oil, you're burning coal. We create electricity. Electricity is pretty much transferred radiant energy from the sun going through our little equals power in it. Um, the, the devices themselves, um, yes, it's, it's matter, right? We've got Papa Tuanuku, we've got Earth here. Yeah. Um, who is the Atsua of the digital realm? Well, like you said, we personify them. So we're creating Atsua that we're personifying these elements that have whakapapa and we're personifying them. And then we, I think we manipulate the name. And that's mm -hmm. what a karaki is a word manipulation or an alignment of energy. Yeah, and setting of good, intention. Setting of intention or we can engineer it nowadays. So yes, we can create a, yes, we can create an Atsua, but the, let's not be a, uh, cliche or let's not be half pie about it <laughs> yeah, 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 um, yeah but i'm not saying yes we can i mean that that's a that's a big part though mm. um but i think the answer short in my heart in my mind why not <laughs> yeah well and also you know why would we why would we create an atua um, why would of we? this digital realm um yeah. maybe because that atua can help us be safe in this digital realm maybe it can okay. it can give us the qualities or, or teach us about the qualities that um, that help us move through and navigate this this you know blockchain space, um, mm. connect with each other across vast distances. You know, like there's there's aspects of Tani within the blockchain. There's aspects of um, of Te Uira. Um, you know, kite kite Te Uira, kite kite um, ia rua te pukenga, rua te pupuke. Mm. You know, ngā ngā rua. Um, there's there's aspects of all our different existing atua that say right. you know come from Hawaii brought to Aotearoa our atua came with us you know Kanaloa up in up in um, Te Mona Nui Akiwa is, or Ta'aroa is the same as Tangaroa over here you know those those atua that that our tupuna brought with them when they came to Aotearoa and you know Tini Taiwa Tini Tata we kawene o Tata atua pini ngā kororo Tata wa Papa you know like here, here we are kind of moving into this new new digital space 
Um, and I think it's good to be intentional, like to, to think about, you know, what, what aspects do we want to take in? And also, I, I think it's a real good, good one for us to have, you know, um, how to or tene ao matihiko, um, other than just the electricity. Like, I, I believe it's it's both. It's the electricity, it's the energy, and the matauranga because it's information, eh? It's information that's being transmitted. It's information that's being stored in our um, tātai waihere, in our blockchain. Um, so, you know, that that's another thing for us to, to have a wānanga about, to think about, um, and to imbue into the space because then it means more than just, oh, it's a bunch of computers talking to each other. Because it could be just a bunch of computers talking to each other with code, with and code has no emotion, it has no spirituality, it has no um, imbued personal human energy. You know, how so, can we make it more than that? Kia, kia no hoki tua o te ra. Oh, yeah. 100%. Oh, I so agree with that. Quarter, that was awesome, actually, brother. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it really, if we look at digital, it does come from organic matter and it does come from. Um, at the end of the day, it does have a fuck up up, and we can trace it back to a lot of Atua, like you're saying. Mm. Um, if you look at, let's say, um, uh, you, you carve a taiaha, and that's a representation of two matauina, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that's, that's a technology. We've taken it, we've put an intention, and we've put a connection and a spiritual, you know, developed a spiritual relationship, personification. It's a representation or extension of two matauina with all that matauranga tikana kawa. Why can it not be done here? Yeah. Like, and like you're saying, we there's something, you know, like, that's right. We're having a laugh and, you know, pretty casual here, but we can also change the frequencies or the level of that. And we could bring down, we could make it a lot more sacred, more, more close. But again, mm. information, transmission, electricity, there's a lot going on here. You can, there's so many ways to look at it, but don't, yeah, don't, don't think that it can't be done at the E. We have a lot of, you know, yeah. yeah. No, we've, totally. we've got our minds for a reason. <laughs> Yeah, and kita yeah, know your poor boy. Tuakana Mahara, our Tuakana Mahara Nicholas, navigator himself. Um, he's he's put in that um, Che Wilson, and yeah, I remember Hannah um, was working on a, a book project. Can't remember what it's called, um, but I think that I think we might have the answer to our to our kororo. Uh, ko wananga hi e, e rawa o te rā e rātou. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll we'll try and find that information and um, drop it into Wait, the yeah. chat. Um, yeah, no, I mean, awesome, awesome. Yeah, bye, Tera. Well, that'll be definitely a good oh, one. Bye, Hiko. Or Wai Hiko, Tena Kui Kirama. So, Wai yep. Hiko, um, if we if we have a look, um, if we have a look for Wai Hiko, I think they've finished the book, and that might be also a way that we can kind of communicate this to our Taitamariki, to our Rangatahi. Mm-hmm. I mean, to all of us, but but especially our Tamariki, because, bro, like, how many. How many of our whanau's kids are spending X hours a day playing Fortnite, playing mine, Minecraft, playing yeah, Call of playing. Duty, playing whatever? They're already in the metaverse. That's right. You know, they're playing games. They're already, you know, Facebook, us, Facebook, yeah. Instagram. We're, we're already we're in there. We're all in there. But it's, we're all in there. It's how embedded are we and how that's are we right. carrying out our practices? Because that's another thing, you know, we see all the trolling and all the division and stuff, you know, caused by the algorithms on Facebook or whatever it is, mm. you know, how can we, you know, bring that back to our tikanga to keep ourselves and each other well, safe? Well, yep, tika tika. I think, you know, I, I don't know enough about, and again, Adi, we're not claiming to be experts here, we're just no, really no, having no, it's a, it's a conversation there. But I, yeah. I don't know enough about Web3, but what I think I do know about Web3 is you get a, you get a type of mana motu hake over your domain. You can create a domain and you get a type of mana motu hake over it. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. so if we look at it like a Facebook page, it's a Facebook page that can do a lot more than that, <laughs> um, mm-hmm. pretty much. So, you know, rather than being on the open market, so to speak, or on the open network, we can really create, not, not a close, or yeah, we can create a really big closed network that we all, it's an ecosystem where we live and thrive in. Um, and it's not saying that that we're locking everybody else out um, or lock, locking our children from going out. But if we create it, that it's so amazing to be here rather than being out there. That's what well, I want to do, bro. That's yeah. the job. The job yeah. is to is, – so it's, like anything for it to be adopted, it's got to be better than what's already available. Yeah. So if we can create something that's amazing for our children that's, that's better than what's available, why would they want to go out there when they could stay here? Exactly. Um, and pine you know, motereo, bro. 
Like um, for me, working with Rangatai for how many years, rather than saying, go work order of Pākehā, go work order of Pākehā, go work order of Pākehā, you know, the way that we work, you know, within Te Hotūro Kotuia, we had our tuakana crew that were running the event, and they were all, all the tuakana, and then we had the Farikura students. If we all spoke Māori, that created an environment that, you know, all the cool people, all our cool older tuakana, um, all our older sisters and brothers, Ah, they're all speaking Māori. Oh, yeah, it's cool to speak Māori. Um, and I really want to mihi to our bro, um, Te Kōrau, Whangatau, up in um, Tāmaki. That, that fella is kai te whaka cool i, I te reo. Um, kai, you know, kai te puta ngā, ngā um, ki waha, ngā ki anga. Um, and, it's, and it's become the cool thing for all the kids, you know, all of our kura kaupapa kids, you know, te pako, they... they they're using that deal because it's cool because it's it's something that we want to aspire to do so that's what i that's why i want us to set a real strong foundation in there so that when our taitamariki come in they want to be maori in the space you know i i want i want my you know my little nephews and nieces and, and kids and stuff when they come in i want them to go oh never mind being a, a, a ape or a or a punk i want to be a, i want to be maui or i want to be um tane or I want to be, you know, Mahuika or something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's the same reason we wear, we wear Michael Jordan, say, we wear yeah, Nike bro. Michael Jordan. Yeah. We, want to, it's, we want to be associated with the brand, with the pop culture. We want to be associated with the idea and it's a place of belonging. If we can do that in a mildly way um, and develop, you know, because like I said, web-free metaverse, we can do, um, we can create wealth, we can do, yeah. you know, cultural experience. We can, you know, be Māori. If you're having an experience, you can do so much in this space. Um, that is our job at Tiwi. It's a big job. But basically what Rafi Tiro was just explaining, um, if we don't do that, um, <laughs> then we're, gonna we're, we're always going to compete. There's always going to be something else. You know, the, the, you know, the way I like to look at it even with, um, if we don't do it, the China man, or the China, I shouldn't say like that, excuse me, TV, but if we don't do it, the, you know, like somebody else will adopt it and our kids will go into it and do something that's not quite, we can do it better for ourselves, put it that way. That's the best mm. way to do it. Mm. Yeah, hard out. And that's that's why I think it's so important for, you know, those of us that are going into the space mm. to really go in, you know, like they're going to go with the, whether we do it or not. So I think, you know, we really need to go in and, and kind of set that, set their taumata um, and also mm. give them something to aspire to. I want them to, you know, now when they're going into NFTs, they're looking around and going, fa, Mr. G, fa, that's mean. Ah, I want to go into that or fa, you know, Richie or fa, Beavers, you know, like because of the people that are in there and the values that we're carrying in. Too I know that in, in our Discord, um, in the in the Beavers Discord, in the Graf Grams Discord, you know, that sort of manakitanga, those, those values – um, Wataua, uara, those Check values up. that we're talking about, they're already happening in there. People are helping each mm -hmm. other. New people are coming in, and um, the the tuakana in the space are helping them learn, uh, are teaching them, are helping them out in those ways. So we can see those tikanga are already finding a place. Um, it was choice as in the Graphgrams one for Te Honui Tuna's um, project. We were even seeing like, you know, kōrurana matau i roto i te reo Māori Yamato e, e, e kororana, so you could see Te Reo Māori um, going in that space, and even just a little kiaura or like you know te whanau, that, that sort of thing. Even just Tika. seeing that in that space was like real refreshing and kind of affirming that actually no, nah, we can be Māori in this space. We don't have to strip our identity or who we are in order to interface with this, you know, this new technology. Um, Hundred percent. Yeah, he pera hoki te ika beavers. They got a tereo channel on there. Yeah, re pai ana, re re pai ana te ho honu o na koru me te me te mama no ano. Um, ka mutu ka kuhu mai with te hia tukare he reo, but they just love. You know, they, it makes them want to learn. They're asking, where do I go learn? This is so cool. I love watching you. Um, you know, love, love interacting and watching te reo in yeah. here. And I've seen it also come up in our little um comments yeah, here on the yeah, side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, see, so what you're talking about, you're exactly right. We've already seen that it. it's, it's happening in a couple of different small silos. It's happening at a small scale. How do we, how do, you, how do we scale up? <laughs> That's basically how, what we're saying. How do we scale up? How do we scale up and how do we scale up in a way that doesn't, it's not just a, a thread that's speaking Māori. How do we scale up where it's, 
You can have an experience, you can develop yourself, your real, your culture, have a spiritual experience, and you can develop your, you know, your, your financial standards of wealth, you can create wealth and stuff like that. Anything's possible. But how do we scale up? How do we connect ourselves and consolidate ourselves in one big network um, under the virtue that optimizes uh, Māori well-being and success? And manaakitana is that virtue um, that we see on, on the marae. It's, it's not about somebody else's well-being over somebody else. We're all there together. Yeah. How do we how do we adopt that at a big scale and bring our people all together and just have, create a space where we can thrive? Now, I'm not saying that that should be the only like we said. Yes, we've got to live in the world. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I think he hoa haere te mati hiko, he, ko te mati hiko to hoa haere te nei ao. It's your it's your companion, really. I mean, I ring up my friends every day on through digital devices. It's how I stay connected. Yeah, yeah. Already yeah. doing it. Already doing yeah. it. We're so let's scale up and, and let's let's make it amazing. Inara te ho ho nu o te nei te nei o tau e ruku e tua kara. Te ho ki te whenu o te. Na 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 na. Poi poi te ho ho nu. Wait wait. No poi te nei kia noho hei wana nga mata tau and hei hei pakarongo ma ma te ma te marea ma o tau te poa. Um, ha ho fakaro faka mitunga e hei ana koe te faka poa ki bai. Hey, hey, kupu uh, whakamitunga hei, hei, whakakopani tataiwa kororo. What are your last thoughts, babe? Uh, for, for this session. We're going to do this again. Mate atu he te te kura. Ie, yeah, kapa. Mate atu he te te kura. Ara ake he te te kura. Um, it talks about when one generation drops off, or when the, the, the pickle pickle, the fern leaf grows and it drops off and then the next pickle pickle. It's talking about succession. It's talking about the, the regeneration um, of the life cycle. You know, if we think about us as Māori and we use that whakatau ki i roto ia tātou, mate atu he te te kura rāke, te te kura talks about the transmission of, of knowledge systems in the reo, uh, but it could be a lot more than, you know, I, I think reo, our Māori tana is our well-being. Um, so mate atu he te te kura, whakara hi ake te 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 kura ki te au hau, that we regenerate this new te te kura mm -hmm into the new world for our people, okay? Um, and don't be too scared to move the times. Don't be too scared to try new things. As I, I think of another whakatau ki, e anātu tō kanohi ki te rā. I'm not sure if it's said properly, <laughs> uh, but it's something like that where it, it talks about face the sun and move forward and it just, you know, hierarchy to a keep keep striving for the sun. Yeah. Keep striving for the sun. E anātu kanohi ki te rā, Strive for the sun, you know, strive for the sun, strive for life. Choose life and use every, we as human creatures, eh, we use technology and tools to improve our quality of life, to harness energy. Um, we can do that as Māori with every single tool to enhance our Māori way of life. Yeah. Um, Ka pai. A wini, wini, kupu, kupu haka mutunga hei, hei, haka kopani tataiwa kororo pai e mihi ana kia koe. Tuakana moe nei, moe nei whakaaro, moe nei whiaako. Ka mutu he whiaako. Uh, naui, naui mau mai kegi ki tataiwa wānanga. Um, me te mihi kia koutau e ngā, ngā kai haka rongo uh, o te nai nei o a popo ano hoki. Um, these are really important kaupapa, I think, for us to, to wānanga. Um, to dive into and to think about so that we can move into the space with intention, intentionally move in the space. Um, and I think it's only gonna it's only gonna enrich the space. You know, when when Maori walk into the room, we enrich the room. Yeah, we're we're gonna walk into the space. We're gonna enrich the space. So, yeah, mihi no kia koe te tuakana Maori te mai Maori fakapuaki e nei fakaro e nei kororo. And I can wana nga no tau a aini, eh? E, e hara, e hara. Me wana ra rao ka tika. Uh, ka nui taku mihi ka koutou e te iwi. Uh, Noho mai rai do i raro i nga manaakitana te wahi naro. Uh, uh, yeah. Kia ka hatu nui rā tātou. Ka tareka e tātou. Uh, me naka moe moe a hau, a koe hau a nake. Me naka moe moe a tātou, a katae e tātou. Kia ka hara, kia ora tātou. <laughs> Kia ora mai. Ka whakairia i nai nei wa tātou, a oh, wa tātou kōrero, a wa tātou wānanga, a Kita tā huhu o tō tātou whare kōrero, anā he pito kōrero ka whakao kia. Pō Marie te whanei, che, catch up now on the next one.